it's day six of the fire pit build today and Paul suggested with the temperatures of 30 degrees coming up that we should get an early start. Of course I agreed, I'm an early morning sort of person, thinking it'd say around six o'clock. I'm filming this just after four in the morning. It's very early, but we want to really crack on, get some work done before it gets too warm. Yesterday had a great day, unfortunately got a little bit sunburnt, but we made some actual progress. Not a lot of blocks were laid, but we got the main sort of design laid out, all the levels set, so we're ready to get going today. I did want to film a video last night, but unfortunately there was some rare party at the other side of the village and you could hear quite loud music. It's hard to talk about ambience, future plans, bird song, when you've got music thumping right over the top of you. So hopefully the next time you see me on camera, there'll be some real progress and we'll have actually broken the back of this project. Probably not the best metaphor to use, but you know, we'll go with it. Fast forward then to later in the day and it's now really, really warm. Probably not far off 30 degrees and there's quite a strong breeze too. So we definitely made the right decision getting the graft on in the morning and then finishing around lunchtime. Then we could be sensible, go inside while the sun was really hot this afternoon. But I wanted to come out again later today, now the sun's dipped down a bit, and show you the progress that we've achieved. This is probably the last daily video that I'll do in this series, because tomorrow, Saturday, I've got a fair few things to do around the garden, tidying up, moving some materials, ready for the next block of work. And then Sunday, I've got a little trip out, obviously plant related, there might be a video, who knows, we'll see. So that's my main plan for this weekend. A little bit of a break from it, but I hope you've enjoyed this series. Anyway, enough rambling on, let me show you the progress and a few of the things I've really learned from this past week. As you walk around to the fire pit then, the Jabea, that'll definitely have enjoyed the heat today. Certainly more than me. You can see I've still got some packing away to do. But first thing you'll notice down here, Remy getting filthy, is all the dust. There's been quite a few blocks to cut and it certainly gives this arid style landscape a bit of an alien twist. As we head down then, into the fire pit, I'll zoom out to make it look even bigger, there we go. You'll see we've got some block work in. Now, I can't take the credit for all this at all. I only did a few little filler bits on that left hand side and this is all down to Paul. So once again, massively grateful for his help in this project. I think without Paul, it's fair to say, I would have probably started on the corners, maybe had a few blocks in place and that would be about it. So you can now get an idea if I walk around the idea of the scale of the fire pit. When I say fire pit, I suppose more of a sunken patio really, but it's gonna be a beautiful space. And I guess really this time of day, I'm filming this just before six o'clock. This is probably my fastest turnaround YouTube video ever. You can see the sun, just the right angle, straight up there, shining in. It's a beautiful place to be. The blocks done by Paul, very professional. The ones done by me, well, I think now the mortar's starting to dry, they don't look too bad. But the key with everything, really take your time, that's what I've learned. I knew it anyway, but it really is something where if you make the effort to get the lines as straight as possible, spirit level, several times in every block, some of them I had to take out and do again. I say had to, Paul insisted on it, but I wanted to make sure everything was as, as good as I could do anyway. So I'm really, really happy with where we've got to. What we're actually doing is taking it up to five blocks high all the way around which on this side here should actually give quite a nice sort of fall to the bed so basically one two three four five this is the finished height and on top of here i've decided i'm going to be using some of those york stones those beautiful regular lumps that i've got they'll be a sort of coping to the top of it so as you can see looking up the back there the bed it gently falls towards you, which is great for drainage, great for these sun-loving plants, and it's also great for displaying the smaller plants. All the succulents, the sempervivum, sempervivums, however you pronounce it, they will look great here, shining away in the sun. And it also allows for a few artistic little slopes, like up here, that's currently three blocks high, so with a couple more, it'll be around there. You're gonna have some beautiful sort of levels cascading down here. And I've actually received a book fairly recently called The Crevice Garden, which I know is a little bit of a niche sort of area of gardening, but I'm really getting into that style, sort of packing the rocks in and having the plants tumbling over it, and then maybe injecting some wildflowers as well. 
So that's the rough plan. And on this side over here, you see again, it's three blocks high. Now in my head, I suspect we could actually just put another block in here and have it four high. But looking back at the project early today, spoke with Paul and what I think, and he also agrees here, is if we go to five high all the way around, it'll make the whole project look more consistent. You're not having drops in level then, and it will just make all the copings just bring the whole thing together. Now, what it will mean is that the wall on this side, we've raised up a little bit higher, but the palms that I'm planting in this bed here, they're gonna grow upwards anyway. The shamrocks, trachycarpus, I've got a few other shamrocks volcano as well. So those are all plants that are gonna grow up. Having a wall at that sort of height, it's not gonna be a problem. And I think it really tie the whole thing together. It'll be an impressive looking space when it's done. Now, one thing that we had to do over here is I had to dig out a little bit because my footing actually went under and this cliff came over the top. So I had to dig out a little bit just to give enough space to work on the blocks. But what that's meant is that we've now been able to achieve nine blocks in length. So again, this is something where proper planning could have avoided it. I originally planned on having eight blocks long, but now a bit of a modification, we've got nine. So the five pit area is gonna be even bigger, even more space to enjoy. Now, a couple of lessons that I have learned from this. Firstly, my actual digging of this project was quite informal. I sort of dug a load of it last summer and then actually came back to it this spring and completed it. But at that time, it was more of a project that I was gonna continue down the line. And it wasn't until I had a definite week off work that I've actually been able to achieve this sort of progress. So what I should have done really is actually take the measurements off that fence, which I know is straight, and actually dug to those. That would have saved a lot of messing around. It would have mean that issues like all this concrete here, that essentially sort of wasted, if you like, I know it's not, but all those kind of things could have been avoided. And also, I suppose, probably another key thing is I really should have thought about levels and soil. So potentially, what I could have done is actually jacked up, I suppose I still could do it, the back of this bed here, put some more slabs on edge, and that could have raised this up even more. But that being said, I think when you stand back, having that olive raised up on a mound, it gives a nice little planting area here, and I suppose it really highlights the olive as a sort of focal point. So that's probably not really something to learn from, just more of a design decision that sort of evolved. A couple of very practical things then that I've picked up on and would do differently if I did it again. If I was doing this wall myself, I wouldn't have made so many cuts in the block work. I would have done as few cuts as possible, but one thing that Paul's really insisted on, and I completely agree with, is cutting the blocks so you get the joints roughly halfway into the block. And this way, if I show you over here, you get a lot stronger wall. So by adding all these cuts in at that side over there, you then got the bond falling halfway through. I probably wouldn't have done that myself, and I would have, I'd have still had staggered joints, but they wouldn't have been quite as strong. So I guess really it's one of those things that it's good practice, the end result will be better, and having someone who knows what they're doing showing you, it really is a huge help. And the other thing that I would definitely do differently, as things are, as I've explained, this pile of soil won't be moved till later in the project, but having it here, having this uneven walkway going down to it, that's made things a lot harder because it means then you're working at a lower level, you're constantly trying not to trip over the sort of lumps of stone and mud everywhere. So ideally, if you're doing a project like this, I would say set aside more time for the digging and really focus on getting the clearest area possible. That is a huge help. At the end of the day, this wall around the fire pit area, it's not a retaining wall in the sense it's holding a massive slope back. The amount of soil behind it is relatively minimal. They're seven Newton blocks, they're 140 mil and the concrete, so they should be really strong, perfect for the job. And then once I've got the wall finished, I can then start thinking about the more interesting cobbles over here. I can get rid of that lump of soil that can go back over the sides, mixed with some grit and some sharp sand as well to give the best drainage possible, especially for the arid bed, all the yuccas on that side over there. And once I've got that out of the way, this area will probably then become my main sort of workshop for chopping down all the stone for the copings, for preparing all the materials I need for the entrance and exits going off into the distance. And once I've finally done that, I'll be digging down further here and then putting in a soakway. And I know this is something that a few of you have asked about what I'm doing regarding drainage. Firstly, the soil is actually pretty good here. 
you can see it's relatively sandy, hopefully from this angle. But I appreciate putting a lot of hard landscaping in. Any sort of runoff, particularly during severe rain events, there's going to be a lot more water. And I don't really want it standing in water in winter because then it gets slimy and green. So what I'm going to do is dig a soak away in. I've had a quick look online and I might try and look for some secondhand or you know, cheap eBay soak away crates. And essentially what they do, you wrap them in a membrane, permeable, they let the water in and they basically just hold water, they've got the capacity to store it. So that should hopefully prevent any standing water. It will mean probably a little bit of clever design and maybe sloping the whole thing down to the middle or something like that. But we'll see, that's an issue for another day. Today, I just wanted to give this quick update so I can put the video out. Like I said, this will probably be my last of the daily videos, but the series in general will continue as soon as I next make some serious progress. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I don't want to go through how to make a block wall because there's people that are far more qualified and far more experienced who can explain it in a lot better way. But for me, the take home thing is, I want to do this project all by myself and you do get a lot of satisfaction from that. It would have taken a lot longer to do. I'm sure I could have come to a similar sort of end result, but having Paul on board, having someone that you know who really knows what they're doing when it comes to building, it really is invaluable. And like so many jobs, just talking about how to do something, looking at pictures, it really isn't the same as someone actually showing you in front of you. So Paul has been a huge help. And if there's anyone that you know, what I would say is definitely lean on them, get some advice from them. The end result, the satisfaction is still the same, but I'm really happy with the amount of progress we've achieved. So I'm gonna go inside, quickly put this together into a video. If you've got any questions about it, Remy, what are you doing? If you've got any questions about the fire pit or you've got any other ideas on how I could develop this space, then let me know in the comments below. See you in the next one.